my nostalgic journey moves to the E400, still in pre-Micro Four Thirds era. I no longer have the camera, but I recall that it was smaller in size and lighter than the E1, but sported twice as many pixels. It was launched in September 2006, and it accompanied me on many travels. I showed a photograph of a lower slaughter, referring to the place as a honeypot, in Just Landscapes number 3. Over the years, I have organised several photographic holidays in the Cotswolds from HF Holidays Hotel at Bolton on the Water. A visit to the Slaughters, as they are affectionately known, are mandatory. They are just a short walk from Bolton Village, and a visit in the morning avoids crowds. Well, almost. A popular location like Lower Slaughter clearly shows that not only do you require the weather on your side, but people too, by getting in before they arrive. The Morven Hills is another place where timing is essential. I prefer the Herefordshire Beacon, known also as the British Camp, to the Worcestershire Beacon, seen here in the distance. The obvious attraction is the British Camp, one of the best preserved hill forts in the UK. I decided to make it a feature, helping the composition, sweeping the eye towards the ridge to the summit of the Morven Hills. For music lovers, this is a landscape forever linked with Sir Edward Elgar, Nimrod, Pomp and Circumstance, and all that. The River Arran in West Sussex is a favourite, and not too far away from me. In other programmes I have shown Arundel and Houghton Bridge, but Stoppen Bridge is a bit further up river. I hesitate to recommend this viewpoint, because I have since been told that I am standing on private land, even though it is adjacent to a car park. Now I leave it up to you if no one is looking, but you may consider instead a visit with complete confidence to the pub, just out of shot to the right. In October 2007, I led one of my most successful photographic holidays from the HF Hotel at North Balahulish, and that overlooks, incidentally, Loch Leven in the Highlands. Autumn is a fantastic time to visit Scotland, but we were also blessed with a week of almost perfect photographic weather, with an ideal mix of sun and cloud. The selection, and I had a plethora of images to choose from, was difficult. Rather than comment on them individually, instead I am going to play some music by the Scottish composer Hamish McCann for Atmosphere. I will leave each image on the screen for a little while, so that you can still read the metadata and location.
The music was The Land of the Mountain and the Flood by Hamish McCunn. A couple of technical issues before I finish. You may have noticed that I was using center weighted metering and underexposing by two thirds of a stop at 100 ISO. I have since been told that 200 is best for optimum performance. The E400 has an optical finder, not electronic, therefore not suitable as spot metering is unforgiving, even if you get it slightly wrong. Center weighted is more flexible and allows for errors of accuracy. Coupled with this, I underexpose not by a third of a stop as I do today, but two thirds, which I found worked better with center weighted metering. I am not exercising any scientific judgment for this. So long as the photographs look better, I don't really care what is said about exposing to the left. This is not the only technique that others frown upon. All images are hand-held. What you cannot see is that they are saved to RAW and then processed in Adobe Lightroom. Some photographers find my JPEG images oversaturated. I agree, because I am supplying to a commercial market, and that is what they want. But I archive the unprocessed RAW image, not the JPEG.